this video, we're going to cover glycogenolysis or the breakdown of glycogen. So by the end of this video, you'll understand how glycogen is used and broken down to glucose to produce energy. We're going to cover the steps involved, when and how it occurs, and how glucose is transported out of the liver. But before we go through the process, let's first discuss this polymer of glucose and its structure. So glycogen is an animal polysaccharide that's mainly found in liver and muscle. So when we have excess glucose, it's turned into this polymer for storage. So we can use glycogen in energy production. In muscle, we can use it for aerobic or anaerobic metabolism, so when we're exercising, because we need that energy to support muscle contraction. And in liver, we use glycogen during fasting, so when glucose from the diet is not available, like in between meals. And this is going to help other tissues in energy, like the brain, the neurons, because the brain can't use fatty acids. And when it comes to mobilizing glycogen, it's the same in liver and muscle. The only thing that is different are the enzymes, which we're going to see later on. Okay, so glycogen is a polymer of glucose. So let's take a closer look on how they are linked. So these glucose molecules that are in linear form are linked via alpha-1,4 linkages or glycosidic bonds. And the branches are linked via alpha-1,6 linkages. The numbers 1 to 4 and 1 to 6, that's referring to the carbon number of the two units that are joined together. So now that we've covered what glycogen is and how it's structured, let's now subtract complexity by going over how glycogen is broken down. Let's go through glycogenolysis. So we have glycogen here, and you're going to see why I have these ones in a different color. But there are three enzymes involved. We have glycogen phosphorylase, the branching enzyme, and phosphoglucomutase. And we're going to go through each of these enzymes and their role in glycogenolysis. So let's start off with glycogen phosphorylase. So I have my glycogen here. It's branched. So recall that the linear stretch here is joined together by alpha-1,4 linkages. And the branch is linked via alpha-1,6 linkage. So what glycogen phosphorylase does is it's going to break these alpha-1,4 linkages, so the linear form, and it breaks these by adding inorganic phosphate. The phosphate is added to the first carbon, transforming it to glucose 1-phosphate. Now the way I like to break this down and the way I remember this is, think of it like they are playing dodgeball. So we have glycogen phosphorylase here, and glycogen phosphorylase is holding on to this dodgeball. And this dodgeball is inorganic phosphate. Now the glucose residues are holding hands. And so glycogen phosphorylase is going to throw the ball, the inorganic phosphate, between two glucose units, breaking the bond because they were holding hands. And so this glucose is going to catch that phosphate at the first carbon. So think of it like glucose has six hands, six carbons, right? And it's going to catch it in the first hand. And so this glucose is going to be turned into glucose 1-phosphate because we've added that phosphate group onto that first carbon. Now, this glycogen is shortened by one residue, and we can write this as glucose N-1. So glycogen phosphorylase is breaking these alpha-1,4 linkages, and it's going to keep throwing these inorganic phosphates, these dodgeballs, to break the alpha-1,4 linkages until it reaches four glucose away from where there is an alpha-1,6 linkage, and then it stops. Okay, so that's why I have these glucose residues in different colors, right? So once it stops, that is where the second enzyme, the branching enzyme, comes in. But before we go through what the debranching enzyme does, let's quickly recap glycogen phosphorylase. So glycogen phosphorylase is the enzyme that breaks these alpha-1,4 linkages. So the linear, the linear stretch here. And it's going to be producing glucose 1-phosphate. And it's going to keep breaking these alpha-1,4 linkages until it reaches four glucose molecules away from where there is an alpha-1,6 linkage, and then it stops. So we've got one, two, three, four, 
So that's four glucose away from where there is an alpha 1,6 linkage. And so it's going to stop. And this is where the second enzyme called the debranching enzyme comes in. And what it does is grabs these units here and transfers it to this line. So the name of this enzyme is easy to remember because it's debranching this glycogen. This is what's called a transferase activity of the debranching enzyme. So again, this enzyme is going to grab these three glucose residues and it's going to attach it to a non-reducing end and reattaches it in an alpha-1,4 linkage. So recall that the linear form is attached via alpha-1,4 linkages and the branches in an alpha-1,6 linkage. So that's what the debranching enzyme does. So now we are left with this glucose residue, this glucose unit here. So we've transferred the three glucose residues to and attached it to a non-reducing end. So now what happens to this glucose unit here? This glucose is going to be cut and released as free glucose. And this is done by the debranching enzyme, specifically by the glucose cytase activity of the debranching enzyme. So when we were transferring the glucose residues to another line, that was due to transferase activity of the debranching enzyme because we were transferring the three glucose residues. But now when the glucose molecule is released as a free glucose molecule, it's caused by the glucose cytase activity of the debranching enzyme. Okay, so then what happens to this free glucose? We broke down glycogen because we wanted free glucose. So now that we have it, what do we do with it? Where does it go? So this free glucose is going to leave the cell and it's going to enter the bloodstream to increase blood glucose concentration because our objective was to break down glycogen so that we can increase the blood glucose levels. And so we have the remaining polymer here. So what are we going to do here? <laughs> well, glycogen phosphorylase will continue its activity. So glycogen phosphorylase is going to come back here and it's going to keep adding phosphate groups. It's going to keep breaking these alpha-1,4 linkages, producing glucose-1 phosphates. So now that we have released this free glucose, we still have a slight issue. And that is we're only releasing small amounts of glucose into the blood. And our objective is to increase blood glucose concentration. And so because we're only releasing small amounts of glucose, we need to produce and release more glucose. And so to do that, let's go back to these glucose 1-phosphate molecules that we've produced and go through how we can turn these into glucose molecules so that we can increase our blood glucose concentration. So these glucose 1-phosphate molecules are going to be transformed into glucose 6-phosphates by the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. And this reaction is reversible. So you can turn glucose 6-phosphate back into glucose 1-phosphate. And you may have heard of glucose 6-phosphate in other metabolism lectures. It's very popular. It's involved in many metabolic pathways. So now what happens to glucose 6-phosphate? So if you recall back from the start of this lecture, I mentioned that when it comes to glycogen mobilization, it's the same in skeletal muscle and in liver except for the enzyme involved. So in skeletal muscle, glucose 6-phosphate can enter glycolysis and obtain energy required for when you're exercising to support muscle contraction. And in liver, glucose 6-phosphate is dephosphorylated to glucose so that we can increase blood glucose concentration. So dephosphorylation means we're going to be removing the phosphate group. So it's hydrolyzed to glucose by the enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase. And this enzyme is present in liver and kidney, but not in skeletal muscle and other tissues. And the purpose of this is to help maintain blood glucose levels when it decreases. And so that's the difference in skeletal muscle and liver. So let's go through how this occurs. Let's go through the hydrolysis of glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate is produced in the cytosol, and the enzyme required, glucose 6-phosphatase, is found in the endoplasmic reticulum. This enzyme is an integral membrane protein. It's membrane-bound. So we need to transport glucose 6-phosphate into the endoplasmic reticulum lumen through a glucose 6-phosphate transporter called T1. 
And in the lumen, it's going to be hydrolyzed, producing glucose and inorganic phosphate. So dephosphorylation, we're removing the phosphate group. And if you're wondering why this reaction catalyzed by glucose 6-phosphatase takes place in the endoplasmic reticulum lumen, that's because glucose 6-phosphate is also involved in glycolysis. So we need to separate this because we call that glycolysis occurs in the cytosol. So after glucose 6-phosphate is hydrolyzed by glucose 6-phosphatase, we've produced glucose and inorganic phosphate. So then this glucose and phosphate is going to be transported out of the endoplasmic reticulum through two different transporters, T2 and T3. So now that we have glucose in the cytosol, it's going to be transported out of the hepatocyte, out of the cell, and into a blood vessel here through a transporter in the plasma membrane called GLUT2. And now the end result is we have increased blood glucose concentration, which is the objective. Now, before we summarize, I quickly want to note that glucose 6-phosphatase is only present in liver and kidney. So muscle tissue and fat tissue or adipose tissue does not have glucose 6-phosphatase, which means these tissues, muscle and fat tissues, can't turn glucose 6-phosphate that is produced when glycogen is broken down into glucose. So this means they don't release glucose into the blood. Only the liver does. <sighs> okay, so now let's summarize glycogenolysis and recap everything that we've covered in this lecture. So glycogen is an animal polysaccharide and the key enzymes involved are glycogen phosphorylase, the debranching enzyme and phosphoglucomutase, and also the enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase, which is only present in liver and kidney. So glycogen phosphorylase is the enzyme that breaks these alpha-1-4 linkages, this linear form, and it's going to keep breaking these linkages until it reaches four glucose molecules away from an alpha-1-6 linkage. And after it reaches that four glucose away from the alpha-1-6 linkage, the debranching enzyme comes in. And so the debranching enzyme the transferase activity of the debranching enzyme is going to transfer these three glucose residues onto this non-reducing end, and it attaches it via an alpha-1-4 linkage. And so we're left with one glucose unit here, and this glucose unit is going to be cut and released by the debranching enzyme as a free glucose molecule. So then this free glucose molecule is going to leave the cell and enter the bloodstream, and we're going to increase our blood glucose concentration. But because we're only releasing small amounts of glucose there, we're going to go back to the glucose 1-phosphate molecules that we've produced. And so these glucose 1-molecules are turned into glucose 6-phosphate molecules by the phosphoglucomutase enzyme. And so from glucose 6-phosphate, in muscle, it can enter glycolysis, and in liver, we're going to hydrolyze glucose 6-phosphate into glucose and inorganic phosphate by the enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase, which is found in the endoplasmic reticulum, and it's a membrane-bound enzyme. So after we've broken down hydrolyzed glucose 6-phosphate to glucose and inorganic phosphate, glucose is going to be released into the bloodstream, and we're going to increase our blood glucose concentration. So that is glycogenolysis. In this lecture, we learned how glycogen is broken down into glucose to produce energy and so that we can increase our blood glucose concentration. We learned what the key enzymes are, glycogen phosphorylase, the debranching enzyme, phosphoglucomutase, and the enzyme that's only found in kidney and liver, glucose 6-phosphatase. We talked about how glucose 6-phosphatase hydrolyzes glucose 6-phosphate into glucose and inorganic phosphate so that we can release glucose molecules into the bloodstream, increasing our blood glucose concentration. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow down. To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire metabolism playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating.